this one is titled prophetic synchronization because that is what the prophetic will do. It will synchronize your life. It will bring things into alignment, okay? Now, I'm really excited about this uh, and uh, because just about maybe a week or so ago, I don't know if you saw my Facebook Live, and by the way, you know, follow, subscribe to our Facebook, to our YouTube channel. Uh, but just about a week ago, the Lord gave me a prophetic word about synchronization. And I don't know if you saw that uh, video uh, or the, the fireman on Instagram, etc. But the Lord dropped this word on my spirit about synchronization, angels of synchronization, prophetic synchronization. So the Lord began to download different and greater revelations about this realm over me. And uh, so I felt like I wanted to do a Zoom webinar, go in depth with you about this realm called synchronization, prophetic synchronization. And uh, I'm excited, okay? Uh, first and foremost, uh, all of this is being recorded, so you can have it. Uh, we'll send it to your email. It will also be uploaded on YouTube. All of our free resources are uploaded on YouTube and to our website. Uh, but pretty much, I'm going to be going over uh, four or five different topics today. And then afterwards, um, we're going to maybe ask some q and A. I I do like Q&A, but I'll just go with the flow. And then afterwards, I'm going to pray with you. Amen. But who's ready for an upgrade? Who's ready for things to come into alignment in your life? I'm so excited because remember, the word of God says, you cannot give unless you have it. And let me tell you right now in my life, I am seeing such a synchronization of things happening right now. It is mind-blowing. It is mind-boggling. So therefore, because I'm walking in that grace and that glory, I am able to impart it into you. In fact, every year we start off with 21 days of consecration. Who, who finished their 21 days of consecration? God bless you. Amen. Every year, myself and our ministry, we have been instructed by God to do 21 days of consecration to start off every year to give him the first fruits of our year. And uh, every year, God kind of ministers to me a personal theme. Okay. It's been about four years since I've been doing this, but he ministers to me. He begins to impart, drop certain nuggets into my spirit, which is going to carry over and overflow for the rest of the year. So, uh, you know, I, I really feel like this year, during the 21 days of fast and consecration, God has been birthing businesses out of me. It is unusual. I'm telling you, things are coming to alignment, and I'm going to talk about that more in a little bit. But things are coming to alignment, and uh, when you fast and consecrate, things quicken. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Amen. Are you with me? But I'm going to go over about four to five topics. The first section or the four to five sections, the first section is, of course, the introduction. Okay. The second section, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about uh, prophetic synchronization and what takes place in the midst of prophetic synchronization. Uh, the third part I'm going to talk about is what are the fruits or results of the synchronization? The fourth part, I'm going to talk about what uh, are the hindrances of synchronization? Hallelujah. And then afterwards, I'm going to pray and minister and possibly take some Q&A. But I'm super excited about this because when a man of God or a woman of God prophesies, there is order that begins to take place. How many of you have been changed by a prophetic word? Wave your hand. How many of you have been changed by a pathetic word? Okay, yeah. But, uh, you know, whenever words are being spoken, that will release destiny or that will destroy your life, okay? And so whenever a man, woman of God prophesies, there's synchronization that takes place. Now, I know this is a loaded word. Uh, I'm a word type of guy. I love etymology, the study of, of the root words. Of course, you study Latin, Hebrew, Greek, study English. Uh, but uh, I love studying words and just different word plays. But uh, 
uh, synchronization is literally made up of two different words, sync and cron, okay? I don't know about you, but I don't want no Omnicron, okay? I don't want no Digimon, no Megatron, no Tetron, all right? It's called cron, coming from Kronos. Of course, I'm pointing to my wonderful watch right here. Uh, it's chronology, okay? And that is one of the Greek words for time. There's actually three Greek words for time. And uh, one of them is chronology or chronicles. Who would have known that God is from California? Because he has not one book of chronicles, but two books of chronicles, all right? But, uh, and by the way, I, I feel very giddy today. So I have a sense of humor. Anyways, so chronology means a sequence of time right? Like the hand of a watch. There's a certain sequence, second by second, minute by minute. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Minute by minute, hour by hour. So there's a certain sequence of time. Chronology, right? We're, we are chronicling the gospel, the story, the life of Jesus in the gospels. There's chronicles, time and time. Are you following me? The second word is kairos, which I'm going to come back to. And kairos means the right now divine time, okay? The right now divine time, kairos. And the third Greek word for time in the Bible you can find is temeo, okay? T-I-M-E-O, temeo, which stands for time, okay? Is a measurement of time. Three different Greek words of, for time in the Bible in the New Testament. So synchronization is made up of two words, sync and cron. Cron is chronology, and sync means unity and harmony. Who's ready for greater unity in your marriage, in your cranium, in your brain, in your body? Sync, unity, harmony in your relationships. By the way, if you want to learn one Korean word, uh, it's called harmony, which means grandma, harmony, okay? So, uh, and not opa. But when you are in sync, there is a union, a unity, a harmony where things begin to flow. So sync, cron, which means it flows with unity and harmony, and there is a sequence of events that begin to take place. I feel like I'm preaching today. So synchronization is two words, sync and cron. And I believe today in this webinar, God is beginning to set up certain things in motion for your life. God is beginning to set up certain things for your future, for your destiny. There is a sequence of events that begins to build up from glory to glory, level to level, faith to faith, victory to victory. Now this in other words, you can say is a perpetual blessing. I did a, a recording uh, today with Dr. Hakeem Collins. And, uh, you know, him and I, we were just dropping big words. I felt like Bishop T.D. Jakes. Uh, but, you know, he said, this is the year 2022 of perpetual blessings. I love that word, perpetual. That word means that it is constant and consistent. He dropped the word perpetual. And the baby in my spirit, by the way, I'm a man, so I can't have babies, but you know what I'm talking about, all right? Uh, the baby in my spirit left, and I said, you said perpetual. No, it's perennial, which that word perennial means eternal, everlasting. So when you are in sync with God, not only is there perpetual blessings, but there are perennial blessings. That word perennial means it becomes more valuable with time. Somebody say, I am fine wine. Somebody say, I am that good Swiss cheese. All right. You get more fine with time. And that's what happens in the glory of God. We actually don't age. We mature, which means we become better, smarter, wiser, stronger. We become more like Jesus from one level of glory to the next, okay? So when you are in synchronization, it's not just perpetual, which means constant. It's perennial. 
it increases in value and it grows in substance. It's exponential multiplication. Are you following me? Sorry if I'm dropping so many big words right now. Anyways, I might not. I'm just kidding. But that's what happens when you are in synchronization with the Lord. You increase in value. Your substance deepens, widens, and grows. Things begin to take place, and it expounds and exponentially multiplies, and things grow. Who's ready for great harvest? Who's ready to reap mega, mega fold in your life? And that's what prophetic synchronization does. And like I said in the beginning, when a man, woman, of God prophesies over you or into your spirit, man, into your life, there is a synchronization that takes place. What does that mean? That means that you begin to come into alignment with God's word. Remember, the Bible says that man shall not live by bread or rice or roti alone or Italian noodles, beef noodle. We will not live by beef noodle alone. Okay. We will not live by carbohydrates alone. But we will live by the word of God that is spoken. Okay. It doesn't say that was spoken. It still is being spoken today. He's not just the God who was or who will be. He's the God who is. I am all that I am. Anyways, I just feel like I went a million miles a minute. Lord, help me to finish this webinar today. But I'm, I'm doing this because... God wants to bring everything in your life into harmony. God wants to bring everything in your life into unison. Now, if you're like me, you're probably a multitasker, okay? The Bible says that we are multidimensional beings, okay? And uh, that word literally synchronizes. Let's go into Webster's Dictionary, Merriam-Webster. Uh, I don't know it was now Miriam. Well, maybe Webster got married or turned into a woman. Anyways, Miriam Webster's Dictionary. All right. Uh, that word means that many things are happening at the same time. Many things are happening at the same time. If you are human like me, you're probably not that simple. You're probably a little complicated. You know, oh, it's complicated. Hey, who is that person? Eh, it's complicated. No, it ain't. Bring it into harmony. Bring it into synchronization. But that word synchronization means many things are happening at the same time. I want everybody to do this like you're local. Many things are happening at the same time. Okay. Ooh, wow. I feel like we're on TikTok right now. <laughs> All right. Many things. Dolores, I like, the, I like seeing you do that one. <laughs> hey, hey. Anyways, many things are happening at the same time. And we know in life, there's so much going on at the same time. You got one child, two child. You got a husband, which means you got a third big child. I mean, there's so many things happening at the same time. But synchronization means that everything that's taken place is moving as one in harmony. You are a multidimensional being. You're called to have many businesses, not one business. You're called to oversee many territories and lands, not just one. Jesus said, if you're faithful with a little, then you will be faithful over much. If you're faithful over five talents, you'll be faithful over five cities. So come on. God is about multiplication. He's a, he's a collector. So synchronization means there's many things happening at the same time. Unfortunately, most people are not able to handle the many things happening at one time. That's why I'm saying God wants to bring synchronization to your life. Oh, I got so much happening. Of course, we always do. And if you're faithful, you're going to get more. Do you know what faithfulness means? Get ready for more responsibility. That's what it means. All right. Yeah, my goodness. I'm ready for more responsibilities. I'm ready, for, you know, for more people to bring me that drama. And, you know, and, you know, I'm ready to keep acting like I care and, you know, keep acting like I'm a good listener. I'm ready. I'm ready. 
But, you know, that's what faithfulness means. Everything is moving and happening at the same time. But how do we grasp it and bring it together into one world? Are you, are you guys following me? Yes? How, because God wants to give you more angel. God wants to give you more Andrew. God wants to give you more. But things need to be in sync. Otherwise, it's going to be defiled and destroyed. Who's believing for more this year? Listen, I believe this is going to be your most prosperous year ever. I believe this will be the best year of your life. I'm not just saying it, okay? I know with all my heart, with all my soul, this is going to be the best year of your life. The greatest harvest of souls we've ever seen. That's going to happen this year. But with all this vision, all these dreams, relationships, new, old, all these, how do we balance it where it's in sync? And that's what we're going to get into today. Amen. And again, we're starting off 2022 strong because God doesn't want you to have scattered brains or have scattered thoughts. Remember, in the beginning, God spoke, let there be light. So out of the chaos, God brought order. God wants to bring order to your life. Who needs that right now, right? God wants to bring order to your life, clarity, direction, guidance. It's called the shepherd's rod that Bob Jones prophesied about. God wants to bring supernatural direction and guidance to your life where it's not going to kill or crush you, but you're going to thrive like never before. All right. Um, so let's keep keep them moving here. Synchronization. I want to talk about uh, what is prophetic synchronization. First and foremost, uh, let's let's talk about prophecy. Okay, let's talk about prophecy and the gift of prophecy. Uh, we're going to go over to 1 Corinthians 14.3. This is a very easy passage. Many of us know it by heart. 1 Corinthians 14.3. And I know Ms. Dolores is bringing it up here, who is our director of media operations and uh, our co-host today. So God bless you. Let's give her God bless you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14.3. But he who prophesies speaks to men for their edification, which in Greek means edifica, or to build up, it's the edifice, to build up encouragement and comfort. Of course, the King James version, not the Queen James. King James says exhortation, encouragement, and comfort. Okay, so edification, encouragement, and comfort. I will say edify, encourage, and comfort. Okay, so prophecy in nature will bring things into alignment into your life. Prophets in nature are pattern interrupts, okay? Who needs your pattern to be interrupted? Who needs your cycle to stop? Your habits, your stinking thinking, your addictions. Oh, I'm addicted to food. I'm addicted to TV. Um, who needs a pattern interrupt? And when a prophet steps into your life, get ready, because they are going to be like a pit bull, bulldog. They're going to be like a greyhound that's going to be all up in your face, point you to Jesus, make you uncomfortable, offend your flesh, convict you because they're salty and they are filled with light. And that's what prophets do. Prophets are an encounter of God that brings conviction and holiness. So whenever you come into an encounter with someone who walks in the prophetic or someone who walks in a prophet's mantle or office, that realm of prophecy will begin to bring synchronization with God's plan. It's a pattern interrupt. God's ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. God's about to break you out of some low-level things. God is about to break you out of some low-level thinking or some low-level faith. You know, and that's the thing. Prophecy, when a prophetic word is spoken or released, 
it be, it becomes a seed. Everyone say seed. It is a seed that goes into the soil of your heart. And you can either water it and grow it, or you can let it die. But every prophetic word or moment impartation is a seed that can grow or will die. But if you take care of the seed that interrupts your pattern and that brings you into God's pattern, that's where we get the words parents or our paternal parents. Paternal comes from the word pattern. Our parents are paternal to us because we're following in their patterns. Are you following me? I feel really good about myself that I'm using so many nice words today. So prophecy breaks you out of a reality and out of a realm which you thought was good and God. But it opens your eyes like honey did to the eyes of, of uh, Jonathan, because honey stands for revelation. The honey of God's word is sweet revelation. And that will open your eyes to see a greater potential. My job tonight is to help open your eyes. Because when you come into contact with the anointing or with an anointed man, woman of God ministry, it will open your eyes and your spirit man to show you the endless potential possibilities of what can take place. And it will begin to move you into synchronization. So prophecy brings alignment and order. Okay. The word of God says that, Jesus, you didn't need to come here. All you need to do is speak a word, and my daughter would have been healed. The word of God says in the book of Psalms, you sent your word, and they were healed. Why? Is it because there's a certain word? No. It has to do with frequency and vibration. That's why the Jews are phonetic people. Actually, when they read the Torah, the Bible, they sing it. And, uh, you know, that's about all the Hebrew singing I'm going to do today. Besides Jehovah Jireh, my provider. But the Hebrews will sing the Torah, the word of God. That's why scholars believe when God spoke creation into being, he actually sang it into being. He prophetically sang creation into manifestation. Are you ready to sing a new song? Are you ready to be led by the spirit and dance like a little butterfly? So prophecy brings alignment, brings order, brings clarity. And I believe many of you have joined tonight because you're wanting greater clarity. You're wanting synchronization. How many of you have a list of prophetic words? How many of you have a list of goals? How many of you have a list of personal desires? My goodness. Well, get ready to start ticking them off your list. Get ready to start crossing them off one by one. The promises of God will be fulfilled in your life. One by one, God's word will manifest true in your family. One by one. And here's the thing. Most Christians, most Christians have a long list of prophecies and promises, but they do not become fulfilled. Is that synchronization or is that stinky? Stinkyization. Is that synchronization or is that stinkization? What's that stink? Oh, it's a list of promises not fulfilled. When you get in the Holy Ghost, 
things begin to have a domino effect, a snowball effect. My goodness, when you get in the Lord, the perennial doors, the perpetual doors begin to open. I'm so excited to talk about this next part. But uh, when we prophesy, we see in part, we know in part. But let me tell you, there's a realm where we can prophesy from the one who is impartial. And you can keep living from part to part. Or you can live from the realm of God that is impartial or that is full and whole. Ooh, I got the goosebumps. So that's prophecy. And God's bringing things into alignment. Okay. Um, we're going to go into a verse here. Ezekiel 116. This is a very unusual passage. And many of you have probably heard it uh, or read it. And you've probably thought to yourself, what the heck is this? Ezekiel 116. But this is what happens when prophetic synchronization takes place in your life. We could actually read. Um, yeah, we'll read from 15 to 17. Ezekiel 1, 15 to 17. Now, as I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel, say wheel, on the earth beside 15. Thank you. Quince, gracias. All right. On the earth beside the living creatures, one for each of the four of them. As for the appearance of the wheels, say wheels, and their construction, their appearance was like the gleaming of barrel and barrel is actually a stone. It is a topaz, uh, turquoise, green, purple, emerald. You already know I love stones, all right? And the four had the same likeness, their appearance and construction being as it were a wheel within a wheel. Some say that a wheel within a wheel. A realm within a realm. A door within a door, a miracle within a miracle, a breakthrough within a breakthrough, a relationship within a relationship, a divine appointment within a divine appointment. An idea opens up another idea. When they went, they went in any of their four directions without turning as they went. And the rims were tall and awesome. Wow. Well, their rims. Who would have known that God had 24-inch spinning rims? Their 24-inch spinning rims, like Lil John, were tall and awesome. And the rims of all four were full of eyes all around. Amen. Thank you, the Lord. Uh, so this is a very unusual passage because the prophet Ezekiel, gets taken up to an encounter, okay? The prophet Ezekiel gets taken up, and God begins to show him the living creatures and the tabernacle. And this passage here talks about wheel, which is so interesting. In fact, uh, the temple had wheels as well. The wheels on the bus go around and around. Uh, but when you begin to look in the commentary and the comparison of the wheels, it talks about the wheels underneath the tabernacle. Isn't that mind-blowing? Like, wow. So what's so important about a wheel? I love this passage because the prophet Ezekiel says there was a wheel within a wheel. Someone say, preach, Pastor Ben. Okay, which means there's a realm within a realm. There's glory within glory. There's a door within a door. When you enter into a space... God brings you into another space, but you're not going to be able to enter through that next realm or space until you step through this realm and this space. Multi-dimensional synchronization. And the wheel within the wheel, the realm within the realm, the word within the word, it's all moving and operating at the same time in sync, in unity, in harmony. 
Why is this important? Because this talks about never ending revelation. This, this talks about never ending movement. Each wheel had eyes all across it, like uh, all the living creatures do. It's scary. It's weird. <laughs> you think demons are scary looking? Now nah, these living creatures are much more majestically, freakishly uh, astonishing. Anyways, but uh, this the eyes on the wheel stand for the all seeing eyes of God, revelation. The wheels stand for movement. All right. Imagine the wheel turns. What does that look like? The hands of time. The wheels turn. Isn't it interesting that even as I'm wearing this watch, many times there'll be the second, second hand on the clock, and then there'll be the hour hand. Come on, somebody. Let's go. Let's take it a little bit further. There's a second hand. There's a minute hand. There's an hour hand. There's a day hand. There's a week hand. There's a month hand. There's a quarter hand. There's a year hand. There's a, uh, you know, there's a decade hand. There's a century hand. There's a, a legion hand. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. It doesn't end. It's all connected. In the spirit realm. So why is this important? Because everything you do is connected. Every single thing that you enact is connected. Woo! Everything you say, everything you do, every person you come into contact with, everything that you do, you don't do, it's all connected with the wheel within the wheel and it's never ending movement. We as prophetic people need to understand this because God wants to put you in right movement with him. And once you start moving, what happens? There's energy. There's wealth. The windmill turns because wind. And once the windmill turns, what happens? It creates energy. And once energy is created, there's wealth. When there's a water mill, the water rushes, pushes the mill, and then the mill moves. And then there's energy created, and you use that energy into wealth. Is anybody hearing me right now? I'm talking to you about being synergized, synchronized with the winds of God. With the waters of the Holy Ghost. How to be one with the movemento, mon, avivamento de Dios. How to be one with my coffee cup. I'm talking to you how to be one with the movement of God. And let me tell you, it's going to speed up. It's going to speed up at such a rapid race and pace that in your natural mind, you'd be going crazy. And let me tell you, church, if you are already going crazy right now, oh, how the mighty have fallen. If you are already going crazy right now, the Bible, the word of God says, if you are tired already with the footman, how can you last with the horseman? If you're already wiped out, if you're already going crazy, listen, we haven't even hit the love month of February where you're going to be stressing about chocolates and roses. And I don't have a date. Of course you don't. But you got a mandate and you got a God date. And, you know, but then there's so much that's going to happen. It's going to move quickly. Like right now, they're talking about Internet 3.0, Metaverse, Hyperverse, all these verses. Like, my goodness, it's hard for me to memorize one verse from the Bible. But now there's all these verses coming out, <laughs> right? Like, things are moving rapidly. And who wants to be the head, not the tail? Who wants to be ahead, not below? Who wants to be the pioneer, not a settler? Who wants to be ahead of the times in the spirit as a prophetic 
voice of God. And the wheel within the wheel stands for movement revelation. And it stands for opening. Because once, you mean not, once you handle the outer wheel or the first wheel properly, then it opens up the next wheel. Then from there, the next wheel. It's never ending. It continues on. It's like the matrix. The door just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Where do you think these people get it from? They either get it from God or Cabal. So God is about to turn your wheel and things are going to speed up. Many things are going to be operating at one time. You know, um, of course, I am a seer. Right? And, and many of you have probably experienced the fruits, the evidence of that gift. I'm not being proud. I'm just being honest. But even when I got saved at the age of 18, now I'm 30. I'll be 31 in, in a few weeks. When I got saved at the age of 18, God opened up my spirit eyes. And I, I would, in a sense, see certain things over people. And these are three things that God has shown me over people. Their office out of the fivefold ministry. Um, where they should be placed on earth, because I was involved with You Will Always Move, Youth with the Mission. So, you know, we're always moving around from country to country, you know, sleeping on people's couches and floors. And so, uh, you know, so God would always show me where people are meant to be placed, like physical locations. And the third thing God will show me is their gifts. Like, what are they gifted at? And now I realize that's an apostolic gift. To know their office, to know their gift, to know their placement, okay? Now, years later, here I am, maybe about six, seven years ago, I began to see realms over people's lives. There are certain men and women of God, Kat Kerr, David Herzog, Jeff Jansen, Charlie Shamp, uh, Heidi Baker. There are certain men and women of God that when I look at them, they're not here. When I look at them, their physical body is here, but they're not really here. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And I'm not talking about crazy, schizo, bipolar, you've lost it, you belong in a mental home type of people. I'm talking about people who are here, but they're operating from another realm. They may be physically here, but they're living from a heavenly place. And so the Lord began showing me different realms over their, their head. I know this, this might sound crazy, but literally that's like portals. And I would see these wheels or these portals moving and rotating in the spirit over people's head. And I'd be like, David, you got like three portals over your head. And you're like, you're moving in and out of different realms right now. I would see these things and I began to understand like, wow, we're multidimensional people living in different realms at one time. Ooh, this is so good. Am I, did I lose anybody yet? Is this good? Is, it, is this meat or is this like milk? You know, I mean, do you want, to, do you want more formula? Um, but uh, so I, I began to see that we're able to move in and out of different realms. But the more faithful you are with the pure in heart, the more you're able to open up certain realms, the more you're able to walk in and out of certain realms right here, right now. It's like a tool belt. Boom, boom, boom. You have access and access. Boom, 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 boom. You're able to move in and out of it. And the more faithful and pure in heart you are, the more God will give you these realms, portals, wheels. Some would say, I'm going places. Some would say, I'm going to many different places at one time. That's why as we're starting this year, 2022, I believe God wants you to be 
an overseer of much more. God wants to give you multiple houses, multiple properties, multiple lands, different types of mantles, anointings. God wants you to have multiple streams of income. Right now, I think I have almost seven streams of income. And they may not be like gaining like crazy revenue, but hey, at least I got a little, little stream. Amen. And let it grow. Let it increase. Can I get an amen? And so God wants you to have multiple because we're multifaceted people. Of course, you already know on earth here, we have, we're made up of three different components, spirit, soul, and body. Spiritual body. We're already tri-dimensional. The Father, Son, Spirit. The Father, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. You also are three-dimensional. In, in being, we're meant to move and operate in many different dimensions. Are you following me? Is this good so far? Okay. So this is what prophetic synchronization is all about. How do I move in and out of many different things? How do I handle different businesses? How do I handle all sorts and different types of people at the same time in this synchronized motion of God's river? How do I do that? And that's what God's going to do with your life. God is bringing synchronization into your life. It may be overwhelming you, you may feel underwhelmed, but God is going to make it flow smooth, like the crema on your feet, like the butter and the oil upon your head. God is going to make things smooth and oily. Let's talk about Kairos and Kronos for a minute. All right, let's go to the word of God here. Luke 4.13 this is interesting here. Luke 4, 13. And uh, give me maybe like 40 more minutes of talking, okay? This is going to be a shorter webinar than usual. But uh, I can't wait to pray for you. Because, um, oof, my goodness. I feel great. I feel the Holy Ghost. All right, Luke 4, 13. The Bible says... And the devil had ended or tried every temptation. And when he departed from him until an opportune time, some say opportune time. So the devil tried to tempt Jesus. We already know the story. And when he saw that it wasn't working, he failed. He left until he was looking for an opportune time. That word opportune in the Greek is chiron or kairos. Let's go to Ephesians 5.16. Ooh, this is so good. I'm preaching to myself today. Ephesians 5, 16. Ephesians 5, 16. Many of us are familiar with this passage. The Bible says, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. That word time in the Greek is chiron or kairos. Making the best use of Kairos because the days are evil. Isn't that such a comparison? Okay. Thank you so much, Dolores. So here's the difference between Kairos and Kronos. You can receive chronological healing, step-by-step -step sequential healing, or you can receive Kairos instant immediate healing. You can do the process and buddy up to people, suck up to people, and network and be all fake friendly to others. So you can try to move up the corporate ladder. That's called chronos, chronolog chronological, chronological. Thank you. Or you can walk in such favor that the manager and the boss says, where have you been? I've been looking for you my whole life. And you get promoted instantly on the first day of your work. Too many of you are moving in chronos 
when the God reality is Kairos and both is God. Kronos is not evil, but sometimes God wants to speed it up. And when you are in sync with the Holy Ghost, things begin to get sped up. Living with God is like a greenhouse. Plants grow quickly. You see this hair? Whenever I'm in Florida or Hawaii, my goodness, my hair grows quickly like a chachia pet. But if you're in cold New Jersey or cold Washington, D.C. or Toronto, Canada, A, oh my goodness, you're probably going bald. All right? <laughs> That's the thing. The fire, the heat speeds things up. God's about to speed things up in your life. That's the difference with Kairos and Kronos. You could wait, oh Lord, and listen, there's nothing wrong with, oh, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait and oh, I'm going to sing a gospel song. Or you can move in Kairos because of what you're doing to be in sync with the Lord, to be in step in tune, in sync with the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, some of your dreams are not manifesting because certain other dreams need to take place first. Certain blessings are not manifesting because certain other things, it's an order, day one. Of creation, God created light. Day two, he separated the darkness from the light. Day three, there's a sequence of things, order. But the reason why you're not on the seventh day blessing or you're not in the sixth day blessing of man and woman, Adam and Eve, of the marriage covenant union, is maybe because you've neglected day five. Because you've neglected day four. Someone say, preach, Pastor Ben. That's the chronos. But when you live in this realm and this life, the kairos just begins to happen. I want everyone to snap your fingers just in that. I feel like I'm at a jazz bar. Miracles begin to take place just like that. Quickly. Suddenly. Oof. Some of you have been praying for divine appointments. Get ready for them. Some of you have been praying for opportune time, opportunities. Get ready. Some of you have been praying for a breakthrough because you're like, oh, I'm bored of this. I know that. Get ready for the breakthrough. It's going to come. But that's what being in synchronization with the Lord looks like. You live a life of Kairos. You live a life of suddenlies, of divine favor. What would have taken you 20 years takes you two years. What would have taken you 15 years takes 15 months. Come on, somebody. I wish I could throw a shoe. What would have taken a lifetime takes you one month. And it's not an age thing. You could be a baby boomer. You could be an onion bloomer. You could be a Gen Z. It doesn't matter what you are. You are of the spirit of God. And when, you fall, when you're one with the spirit, woof. Perpetual doors, friends. Perpetual perennial doors. Zata blaka tara broskata. My gun is Kairos. Some say Kairos. The opportune time, the favorable time, the right time. And here's the thing. Sometimes it's, it, you're waiting for the kairos. And when the kairos happens, oh, you better be ready. It's like, you know, the wave. I'm not a surfer. Okay. I tried surfing. I didn't want to get into the whole lifestyle. All right. But uh, it's like surfing. You're, you got the waves and the waves and you wait for the right wave. And all of a sudden, when the right wave comes, you better get up. You better stand up for your rights. You better hurry up on that wave and ride that thing. That's what happens. It comes quickly. God wants to, 
bring you into a place of kairos. That's what prophetic synergy is, synchronization. Like, uh, I'll share this, but please don't tell anybody, you guys. This is a secret between you and me. I'll tell you this. Like, uh, of course, I've been involved in crypto and, you know, I mean, I'm a noob. I'm a baby. I don't understand this stuff. I'm not techie. You don't see me wearing glasses like June. Okay, you, you see me wearing sunglasses, right? But, uh, you know, like, I'm not a nerd, okay? I'm a preacher, right? I'm, I'm cool. Anyways, <laughs> but, uh, but for me, uh, I've been involved in crypto and I have a lot of friends who are involved in crypto. We already know it's the future, et cetera. And then um, all of a sudden we are hearing about NFTs. Who, who's ever heard of NFTs, right? NFTs. I know you're like, what the heck is an NFT? It's called non-fungible token, right? Or a non-fungus Toe fungus. I'm just kidding. It's a non-fungible token. So it is a digital art piece, right? I know. And I'm not trying to bore you guys with all this terminology, but you know, people are talking about NFTs, NFTs. And I'm like, my goodness, I think there's an opportunity to make some money and to reach people, preach the gospel. And uh, literally probably for about six, seven months, NFTs, NFTs, NFTs. And I'm doing some research. I'm trying to learn. And I'm like, I know. I'm supposed to have my own NFT. In fact, how about this? Last year, I woke up from a dream where I had my own alt crypto coin. Okay, I'm sure you've heard of Bitcoin, right? I heard I have my own alt crypto. I woke up from a dream. I have my own alt crypto coin. I woke up from a dream and God said, glory coin. That same week, one of my spiritual sons, his wife, spiritual daughter, Angie, she has a dream where I rush up to Yusuf and Angie. I'm like, look, this coin is booming right now. One week later, it was all in the same week. That was confirmation, glory coin. And here I am, I'm talking about, oh, one day I'm going to have my own coin. We're going to create our own cryptocurrency, our own crypto coin. And I'm waiting all year. And I'm talking about NFTs. What NFT is? We got to make NFTs. And then I go to Washington, D.C. last week at the Trump Hotel, and I have a divine appointment with a gentleman. And he knows how to create and code cryptocurrency, blockchain, and create coded digitally an NFT community. Now, I'm not going to say more than that. Otherwise, you might try to steal my idea or the feds might try to get me. I'm just kidding. But all of a sudden, boom, suddenly, I stepped into a Kairos. And now I've been on the phone for the last week, my goodness, talking about this, building up a team, setting up a team, my goodness. Let me tell you, one of our friends just started his NFT company three months ago, 60 days. He's a kingdom believer. And uh, he made 250000 in 60 days. And they're going to 10x in the next three months. After that, they're going to 100x. Let me tell you, these are the days of the pioneers. And things are going to shift and move so quickly. You're going to go from waiting on it to walking in it. You're going to go from waiting to all of a sudden, that's the right wave. Write it. Anyways, I'm talking too much. All right. When there's synergy, there's angels that are present. Okay. Just give me a, give me about 20, 25 minutes. Are y'all okay? Are y'all sleeping? Is anybody sleeping here? Okay. All right. I'm going to talk about angels of synergy. There's many types of angels. And there's angels of synergy, angels of synchronization. Whenever you come into alignment, there's synchronization. And when that happens, angels are released. Angels. Angels help move you to and fro into the right direction. There are winds and fire. The winds 
which are angels, flames, messengers, move you into the right direction. But how can angels move and manifest if you don't have a prayer life? If you're not walking in the spirit. Angels are more active when you are a worshiper, when you are a prayer warrior, when you're a son, child, daughter of God. When you're aware. That's why the Bible talks about angels unaware. But when you are aware and you know how to activate different angels, these angels help you to get into synchronization with the Lord. Let me tell you, angels are coming to alignment. You are getting aligned with the will of God. God is aligning you, and angels are coming to you right now to move you into the next level of glory. Woo! I felt like I was monotone for the last 20 minutes. Uska la blanda la bla. Uska la blanda. Hallelujah. God is moving you to the next level of glory. And the angels, the Bible says Psalm 91, the angels that are charged for you will not allow your feet to slip. What does that mean? That means angels are lifting up your feet. Angels are lifting you up. Angels are not fat little Cupid Valentine chocolate babies. Angels are lifting you up. They are your escalator. They're lifting you up. My goodness, this, this is too much. All right. Uh, all right, we're going to go to the last section here. And then I'm going to pray because I feel like I've said enough. And hopefully this is making sense. Things are clicking. It's getting synchronized synchronized what are the benefits or the results the fruit of synchronization all right number one divine appointments let me ask you when is the last time you had a divine appointment and i'm not talking about a disappointment i'm talking about a divine appointment i think honestly Andrew and Leona, you guys might be a divine appointment. I think so. But, you know, it's growing. It's, you know, I know Angel is. God bless you, Angel. Right? I think uh, that wonderful couple that uh, Jessa brought, you know, I think they're a divine appointment for me too. You know, I know the gestures are. But it's growing. Let me ask you, when's the last time you had a divine appointment? You might say, oh, it's been a long time, Pastor Ben. Then you got to ask why. It ain't his fault. Are you in sync or are you backstreet? Are you in sync or are you BTS? <laughs> I got this golden tip for a reason. Are you in synchronization or are you out of being in sync with God? Because when you're in sync with God, you're going to meet his friends. God's going to keep leading you to meet divine appointments, new connections, new people to open up doors for you. Oh, my goodness. And remember, you cannot walk into a gate unless... You honor the gatekeeper. So each person is a gate, and they are also the keepers of their gate. Is this helping anybody? Is this helping anybody? Are, are y'all enjoying this? I mean, maybe I shouldn't do free webinars anymore. I don't know. All right, number two. When you are in synchronization, prophetic synchronization, you begin to flow. Some say flow. Now, some of you, you probably are not flowing right now. And oof, that is, I know what that's like. I know what that's like. It's like, man, where's the flow? Like, it's just not flowing and not going. My dreams, my visions, my ideas are not taken off. Like, it's not happening. Where's the flow? I was just thinking about this thought earlier today. 
You follow where the favor is flowing, okay? You follow where the favor is flowing. And some of you might be like, well, Pastor Ben, uh, I don't want to be driving Uber. But if that's where the favor and the finances are flowing, just go with that. All right, you follow where the doors are opening. There's life, there's excitement, energy. Things are flowing. So when you're in synchronization, there's flow. Things begin to flow easily, gracefully, no hindrance. All right, number three, what begins, what happens when you're in synchronization? Creativity and new ideas. When's the last time you had a brain fart? When's the last time, all right, when's the last time you had a God idea? And I'm not talking about, uh, I think I should get, a, you know, the pepperoni. You know, no, no, I'm talking about a God idea, a revelation drops into your spirit, man. And you're like, this is a eureka moment. This is a light bulb, a hot moment. This is a million dollar idea. So when you're in synchronization, you begin to go, new ideas, revelation. Woo, it just comes, it comes, it comes. Who wants that? All right, next. What begins to happen when you are in synchronization, prophetic synchronization? You have greater experiences with Jesus, okay? In midst of the flow and going up the river, going up the mountain, you begin to experience the Lord. You have different experiences with God. Number five, you have joy and peace because this is what you're made for. This is your purpose. When things aren't working, it's called dysfunction. Who wants to be in a dysfunctional relationship or a toxic marriage? Who wants to be uh, working in a toxic environment or a toxic partnership with somebody? No, that's manipulation, witchcraft, break it off. All right, when you are in synchronization, promises become fulfilled. Remember I told you, who has a list of promises and prophecies? My goodness, let me tell you, I have so many promises that have been fulfilled last year. Every year I get the word of the Lord God, what should I expect this year? I have so much that's been fulfilled. I mean, I, I didn't get my Ferrari yet, but it's coming. But, I, you know, I'm kidding. That's not one of them, but, you know. But promises begin to get fulfilled in your life. One by one by one. Remember, when you get a breakthrough, then that leads you to another breakthrough. So some of you just need to break through in one area, and it, boom, opens up the rest. All right. Number seven, what happens when you're in synchronization? You are in a community. Now, I really like this because you will never be in sync if you're alone. You come into synchronization with others, with people, okay? Now, um, and that's community. It's the power of community. It's the power of the body. And uh, number eight, you become more like Jesus. These are the results of synchronization. I mean, all right, but we're going to talk about what are the hindrances of synchronization, okay? And this is going to help you. What hinders my this prophetic synchronization? I have a list of prophetic words. When is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? When, who, what, where, when, why, it, they, she, we. When is this going to happen? But what hinders or delays synchronization? Number one, sin, of course. The Bible says, if I withheld sin in my heart, he will not hear me. He will not listen. So sin delays synchronization, okay? It 
breaks the sink. Number two, pride. When you walk in pride, you're not going to be in sync with God. You're not going to be in step with the spirit of God when you're walking pride. Number three, witchcraft. When there's a spirit of witchcraft, it hinders and delays the prophetic synchronization. And some of you are probably struggling with a lot of this. Religion is witchcraft. Uh, manipulation is witchcraft. Your parents telling you, don't do this. Your pastors trying to overlord and control. Forced vaccine mask mandates. I mean, it's all manipulation. Whatever's forced or coerced. It's witchcraft. Okay. Witchcraft is manipulation. Number four, unforgiveness. When you have unforgiveness, this delays the blessings of God, the movement of the Lord, the synchronization. Number five, idolatry. You're idolizing certain things in your heart, like God is prompting you to give away your television to Pastor Ben. And you're like, no, I don't want to give away my television. Uh, but what if you obeyed? And you gave that sacrifice, and then the glory came, and you broke through to another level. What if God says, I want you to give a $1,000 seed today? Let me tell you, one of my spiritual sons, John Bayer, Mongolian son, when we were with Pastor Benny Hinn, you know, they took up the $1,000 offerings. And uh, John had no money. He just moved to L.A. He was about to get married. And... Uh, he had a credit card. He had some plastic, not in his face, but in his wallet. He had some plastic, and he gave a $1,000 seed on the credit card. He had no job, no money. One week later, he gets hired at a job. One week after that, he gets promoted to manager. Some would say that's a suddenly. That is a kairos. But you have to. Take a radical step of faith. All right? Where was I? Oh, idolatry. Don't idolize money. Don't idolize people. Don't idolize things. It's nothing. Number six, gossip and slander. Remember, God wanted the Israelites to step into the promised land, and it should have taken 11 days. But because they gossiped and talked bad about Moses, the man of God. It took them 40 years. Do you want your blessings in 11 days or 40 years? My goodness, I'm preaching. Do you want to possess promises fulfilled in 11 days or 40 years? The choice is yours. Shut your mouth. Stop gossiping, stop slandering, stop talking bad about your brother, your sister, your neighbor, your mother, even about yourself. And speak life. Prophesy into your future. Like I'm prophesying, you're beautiful. I'm prophesying, you're handsome. I'm prophesying, you can do all things in Christ Jesus. Amen. Who wants to enter in in 11 days? Or you want to take the extra scenic route and go around and around for another 40 years? Your words have power. And number seven, lying spirits hinder your synchronization. Lying. What does that mean? You are not being honest with God and you're not being honest with yourself. You're not being honest with God. You're not being honest with yourself. When you're not being honest with yourself, you are preventing yourself to walk in synchronization, the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. All right. My last section here. Oh, my goodness. This is coming to a synchronized end. My last section here. How do you move in synchronization? And hopefully this has helped you. I got into some revelation, got into some practical things, broke 
down and open what is prophetic synchronization. How do you move in synchronization? Number one, repentance. You, you want to be more synchronized with the Lord, with the Holy Ghost. You want to be more, you know, we're on the bus going around and round, run, run, run. You want to be moving faster and faster, speed it up, operating in many different realms. I mentioned at the same time, you want to be rapping and tapping the side on the back. You want to, blah, 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 blah. You want to go whoosh, blah, blah, blah. repent. My goodness, repentance speeds up your blessings. Turning away. I mean, it doesn't even need to be from sin, but turning towards God constantly. It speeds your miracle. It speeds up the process. Psalms like God is speeding up my process. All right, number two, you sow. My goodness, let me tell you, your seed will bring you to the place of promise. It's the power of sowing. My goodness, I am a product of sowing. I am a product of sowing. Let me tell you, I'm 30 years young just four years ago three four years ago four years ago it was hard for me to even give fifty dollars it was hard for me to give fifty dollars into the offer into pastor benny's hand into pastor benny's and of course i felt a little ashamed like man this is my pastor my man of god i want to give him more and now i have but it went from fifty dollars I could barely get $50 four years ago to now 5K plus boom, boom, boom. It's the power of sowing. Remember, you sow where you want to go and you sow where you want to grow. That's how you move in synchronization. Some of you are not moving in speed and synchronization because you're stingy. You're holding rather than sowing and giving and blessing. Number three, honor. Honor is a kingdom currency. And I think one day I got to do a webinar on kingdom currency, okay? But honor is a kingdom currency, okay? When you honor, it opens up doors. Honor opens up doors. Why? Because whatever you honor, you begin to inherit from that object. I'm going to say that again. Whatever you honor, you inherit from that object or realm. Honor pretty much means lift up or look up to. Whatever you look up to or lift up, honor, you will begin to receive from that thing. If you honor the government, you inherit different benefits from the government. You abide by the law, you reap different blessings. So honor, I'm, I'm a product of honor. I honor people, right? And again, thank God for my Korean roots and background where I learned what fake honor is, false honor. But in the kingdom, the Lord showed me what real honor is, okay? Number four, you serve. Oh, this is so good. These are all the words that most Christians hate. Huh? So? Huh, serve? I don't want the sexy, juicy words. You serve. That's how you move in synchronization. You serve a man, woman, a God. You serve God. My goodness. Look at the story of, uh, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting. Who, who was uh, the servant of Elisha? Somebody help me. And he became impotent. He became. Gehazi? No. Gehazi, yes. Thank you. Gehazi was the servant of Elisha. Therefore, he served the man of God, and then he gained favor. Unfortunately, because Gehazi's heart was not whole, when the favor came, he tried to take it for himself. And guess what? He lied to the prophet Elisha, and he became like Shemigal. You lie, you become leprous. Remember that. If I lie, I became I become leprous. So you serve, you serve, you serve. Number five, declare. Come on, prophesy. Prophecy in the most simplest form 
is to encourage. I will go around the streets of Venice Beach and I would just begin to prophesy to people, you're awesome, you're amazing. I am? I never knew that. Hey, you're beautiful. You can do it. You can. I am? I'm prophesying. I'm encouraged. I'm speaking life. Prophecy in the, in the most simplest form is encouragement. Okay. But declare the word of God. Your declaration is your destination. Declare a thing, it shall be established. Don't just wait for a man of God to speak it over you. You speak it over yourself. And that's why for me, I remember June a few weeks ago or so, just in D.C. You were crying like a little schoolgirl. It was wonderful. Uh, but, uh, you know, June asked me and said, because, you know, the man of God prophesied a word over me. And June asked me, said, when people prophesy over you in stage or in the crowd, in a church conference setting, do you not like get wowed or amazed anymore? No, because I already know what they know, you know? And so when prophecy comes or a declaration comes, when someone declares over, you're like, yo, I've already been declaring this over my life for years. You're just, you're catching up. You're a late prophet, aren't you? Oh, you think you're prophetic. Because you're picking up on what I am and what I do. Good job. You want a carrot? You want a Twinkie? Good job. Let me clap. Yeah. You feel good about yourself now, don't you? You know, it's, it's funny. Anyways. Sometimes, uh, uh, anyways. Again, and there's levels of prophecy. There's low level or there's higher level, right? Like, Leona, you are there at, uh, where, where were we? In a... Uh, we're in Diamond Bar. We were in Diamond Bar. You and your husband, Andrew, which I don't know what he's doing right now, but uh, you and your husband, both of you are pastors, by the way, you were at the house fire meeting in Diamond Bar. And then I saw over you a house. And I said, I see you looking at a house and God's going to move you. And you were in shock because you guys were just talking about moving, about going to a new house. Yes. I mean, so there's different dimension and level of prophecy all right anyways number six you ask how do you move in synchronization you declare and you ask god i'm asking you sync my life unify my life let there be harmony let there be unity and harmony and synergy in everything that i'm doing god i'm asking you for the grace the oil the flow the favor of god come on rubo kura why is that not happening lord i'm asking you show me the way reveal it expose it come on lead me to the way of everlasting ask for it number seven you hunger oh my goodness let me tell you church Hunger and desperation is the greatest key to your breakthrough. And again, there's a different grace theology. There's extreme grace theology. It's like, I don't need to pray. I don't need to fast. I've arrived. And I'm just going to chill and rest in the Lord because he did it. And it's going to happen. Stop. Stop. Stop twisting the gospel. Okay, yes, he did it, but you need to pray it into being and walk out your salvation. Like, it's not just going to pop out of the air like uh, Bobby Connor's knife. Y'all know the story, Prophet Bobby Connor, you know, he lost his precious knife. And he said, God, I want my knife back. Boom, it just popped out of thin air and it dropped on the bed. I mean, million dollars not going to pop out of thin air. Like, come on, you got to work at it. Go for it. So you got to have hunger and desperation. That's why we fast. We cause our bodies, our appetites, ungodly appetites to suffer and to be mastered so that we can hunger for the things of God. And let me tell you, God is close to the brokenhearted. He's near. The hungry and the thirsty will be filled with righteousness. 
And number eight, you pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray until something happens. You push. You pray in the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, when you begin to speak in tongues, you don't just shift your atmosphere, but you begin to activate angels. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you begin to prophesy into your future. You don't even know. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God leads you into intercession to pray for nations and people and situations you don't even know about. That's the power of praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. If you, you are in a stale, stagnant place of your life, or if you want to move in greater synergy and synchronization in this year, 2022, do these things. Repent, sow, honor, serve, declare, ask, hunger, pray. Do these things and watch what God is about to do. I'm going to bring this to a close. Hallelujah. I've almost been preaching for, eh, it's like an hour and a half I've been talking Shamama. Someone says prophetic synchronization. God is bringing things into alignment and into order. Many things. God has been preparing you your whole life for 2022. I don't care if you're around Toronto blessings. I don't care if you're around the charismatic renewal, the healing voice revival. I don't care if you are part of the Jesus people movement. There's something bigger and greater that's coming. I don't care if you're 60 years young, if you're 85 years young. I don't care if you were Gen Z. I don't care if, if you're five, seven years old. Listen, five-year-olds are more anointed than 50-year-olds. Listen, whoosh, blah, blah. God wants to sink our lives, move it in forward, upward motion. But some of you are stuck. Some of you feel stuck. You're asking God for a breakthrough, but God is inviting you to make a radical sacrifice decision to do something different that will be a pattern interrupt. Oh, my goodness, Jesus. Everyone just pray in the Holy Ghost.